it's not. He's fine. I've been joined by Avinash Chandarani, who's the Group Learning and Development Director at MCI, and Martin Van Est of um, Meeting Design Institute. Earlier today, you did a session on conversational presentation. What do you mean by that? Martin. Well, <laughs> we picked up the word somewhere in an article and we were intrigued and then we uh, went to investigate a little bit, but it's actually uh, another word for interaction, I think, and for having... Or engagement, for getting people more involved. Conversations going on in, in meetings, in presentations, yes. One of the expressions that's used more and more in the events industry these days is it's moving away from the sage on the stage towards the guide right. on the side. Right. You're a, a learning and development specialist, so education and learning is a right. part of your DNA. Right. I mean, what do you see in terms of the way that people are learning today versus the way that they were force-fed teaching many, many years ago? Right, exactly. Think back to your times uh, uh, you know, through college and university. I'd rather you not. Know, exactly. You know how <laughs> painful that was, right? But think about those professors, those teachers also that were far more engaging, right? They were the ones that really engaged you as a student. They're the ones that you remember. And they're the ones you remember, right? And that's, uh, in fact, that's why you also remember their content because they made it interesting. They made it uh, conversational based, for example, right? They challenged you. They asked you questions. They wanted to know what was in your head. What was your challenge? And that's a great way for us to, to learn from that experience, from our own path through education, for example. And how does that apply in this world, right? It's not anymore, in my opinion, and from my experience, about presenting content. It's more about facilitating learning. Mm -hmm. Because what, in the end, is a conference about? What is it about when you talk about presenting something? You want your audience to leave having learned something, maybe you're changing their attitude, hopefully eventually changing their behavior, which that takes time. So I think we need to be sort of rethinking how yeah. we connect with our audience. But so many speakers who speak at conferences are not professional speakers as such. They are knowledge experts, and they're, right. not, they're not particularly skilled at the art of presenting. So Correct. what do they do? They create PowerPoint oh. slides with dozens and dozens right. of bullet points, and they, they use it as a crutch. So what you're suggesting would mean that you can't use that sort of support as such or rely on it as much as you have in the past because you have to be eyeball to eyeball with people more. Yeah, the pro you know, Roy, the problem with that is that PowerPoint tends to become the presentation for most inexperienced presenters. And so they believe that is the presentation as opposed to focusing on the audience, which is the most important part of a presentation, is your audience. They are there for a reason to learn something, whatever that something might be. So. A presenter actually has a lot of responsibility, you know, in terms of the time that group of people are spending to be with them. Mm. Yes, they're sharing expertise. But they're petrified that they're going to look bad, so therefore they put all the preparation into creating You're right. something that looks nice. Absolutely. But guess what? In the end, what happens? They focus so much on that that the whole objective, and tell any presenter, hey, you know what? You didn't reach the objective that actually what happened when people left the room is they forgot pretty much 80% of what you said because they didn't engage with them. They weren't sort of thinking about what were the challenges of those people in the room. Uh, what were their needs? And I think that makes it difficult, right, to actually retain any type of learning if the presenter's not thinking about those challenges. Martin, you've devoted a, l a lot of years now to educating people to design meetings in ways that are more engaging. And I know that at the beginning that it was very difficult to get people's attention because the people that you were talking to wouldn't necessarily see that as their responsibility. What changes have you seen in terms of people's desire now to create meetings that do achieve this sort of thing? Well, I, I, I think the desire has uh, remained unchanged since 1984 when I heard the word uh, interaction for the first time in a sentence spoken by a meeting organizer that said, everybody's falling asleep, we need more interaction. So the desire to do so hasn't changed. I do believe that people are now seeing that there are possibilities and they are learning and they're reading about it and then they're, they're seeing people talk about it. And I think that they see that this is an opportunity. And I think meeting design is everywhere. You see it in all the associations. You see lots of stuff is happening around it. So I think it's moving forward. So they're being far more experimental and innovative about being able to get people more engaged. I mean, yeah. we all grew up having to listen to boring teachers, go through curricula, right. et cetera, et cetera. Um, has the conference industry really taken the same boring model of education and then they're now boring adults in the same way that they were bored as children. But whilst that's been happening, 
the education has been changing and they're not doing it like that anymore. Not all schools, uh, I think, are changing. Some, <laughs> I've seen a classroom where <laughs> you could see furniture and, and you could see a different layout and setup than it used to be, but I don't think all schools are, are changed. I mean, many well, are I mean, still teaching. No, absolutely, they are, but you see now the concept of what Salman Khan brought with flip, the flipped classroom, right, with all of his work. The there is a change there. It's a slow change, mm. but there is an awareness that we need to think of a change in the model of how we, for example, educate our kids. You know, don't you use the time in the classroom wisely by first giving them the concept of the flip, flip classroom. You know, do your, ho do your ch uh, challenging work at home, do some reading, and then we'll converse. We will dialogue based on what you face as challenges at home. Yeah. doing the homework, right? But so conferences, flipping it around. But conferences are about adult learning. Yes, and indeed. Adult learning is very different, isn't it? Well, so how yeah. do you apply the principles right. of the science of adult right. learning Absolutely. to a conference environment or a training right. environment, a seminar right. environment So the whatever. first thing about adult learning is that adults will learn what adults want to learn. That's the first golden rule. So understand what it is. Pretty simple, isn't it? It's a simple one, but, yeah. but guess what? The presenters are thinking more about themselves and their content and to show off expertise, then really understand what is it that the people in the room really want to learn? Where are their pain points, for example? Mm -hmm. And if you understand that, and you know that if these are their pain points, as just one example, you're able to then deliver content, hopefully the right content in the right way, mm -hmm. in order for them to think, feel, and do something in a certain way when they leave the room. Well, I, what I also think is that they can learn a lot from each other. So if you bring in the conversational elements, and you create small groups and they talk to each other, not just the conversation between speaker and audience, which is just bringing the Q&A a little further into the session, but really having conversations among the participants. Well, making it part of it rather than the bolt on at and the end of it. That's what the session today was about, right? Yeah. That's exactly what it did. No PowerPoint slides, purely conversational, even adapting, and that's important. That's what we did, Martin and I. We had a certain sort of like general outline Scripts. of the approach. We, we don't want to call it a script, but it was like, okay, this is kind of what we're going to do. Yeah sharing our expertise, but not in the way of top down. We didn't have slides. What we did was, yeah, we posed a few questions. We engaged them in conversation, asked them about some of their challenges, their experiences in this particular area, and then we played along with that. So whatever came out, then we just adapt and be agile accordingly. But the only people that can do that are A, people who really do know what they're talking about and are actually confident yeah. enough in their own ability yeah. Yeah. to be able to let go of any most crutches. Speakers, most speakers won't. Uh, and we understood and we'll that, right? So that's why we gave that. advice saying, okay, yeah. we understand that we did it this way, but there are a couple of little things that speakers, they you know, can be briefed in certain ways that can help them to be a bit more oh. engaging from a facilitation in, point of view. In summary, what sort of tips would you share? I think the golden tip for me is small group conversations. Small groups in a meeting, uh, give people a question, give them three minutes or four minutes, maybe five to talk, and then get some feedback. Less intimidating. It's very yeah. simple. I mean, everybody speaks. There was nobody that hadn't spoken uh, in our session. Right. So everybody speaks, everybody can ask a question, and everybody else in this small group can answer that question. So then people get what they come for. They can ask what, what, what it's that, that is important for them. Well, that's most relevant. I mean, well, exactly. relevance is the And thing, that's the yeah. whole point. So how, really what does this relevant. mean for you? Yeah. We just talked about X or Y, but what does this mean for you? How does this influence your world? And then, then uh, there's less intimidation, smaller groups. We know the dynamics of small group discussions. Yeah. It makes a lot, of, uh, a lot of difference, right? Engagement, right? So, so what else did you do? And there's no cost, you know, for a small no group. <laughs> <laughs> so and the other thing is also, for example, in briefings, right? We suggested as a tip, you could always brief your speaker saying, okay, you're going to bring your PowerPoints, but maybe you should consider asking what will be the top two or three questions relevant to your subject that will influence or impact this audience group. So think about what will those questions be, and as an organizer, you could probably sort of, weed, uh, sort of feed those questions and help the speakers, especially the inexperienced ones. Because they're guessing, aren't they? They're they guessing get what they think right, people are going right, to want to right. know. So I think, you know, just briefing the speakers and saying, oh, look, think of some key questions related to your content that you can pose to the audience, and we will help you, whether it's through technology or other formats, to try and integrate that. So it's less intimidating also for those inexperienced presenters. Yeah, I think the word helping is important here because most speakers are not you know, ready and, and will never be right. to do, on top of their speaking and putting their, you know, themselves on stage right. to do the facilitation work. So I think, I think one of the important things for the meeting industry as a whole is facilitators. You know, get somebody in that is confident, maybe some, somebody that's from outside the profession and can be this, you know, a little bit of policing, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of creative, 
and he brings in, or she, the facilitator. And I think that's, that's really what we need uh, in, in me. Well, I think I have to say, as a professional facilitator, I love to hear things like that. This is not a sales pitch <laughs> for you, Roy, but <laughs> indeed. <It's laughs> thank you both. Thank you very much indeed. Thank pleasure. you very much. Right, it's a pleasure.